Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So today I do have my sketchbook out as I wanted to kind of look back at a few drawings that I did in my sketchbook that I did with acrylic markers, such as this one of Masaki kind of with a certain kind of color palette and another one I did of Masaki to kind of hide some of my bleed through. But the reason being is that I kind of used acrylic markers in a very kind of particular way, but I kind of wanted to try something a little bit different today. I've done like several sessions with acrylic markers in the past, such as these two videos, but and here's kind of like a small overview of those previous marker swatches that I did in the past. But the lovely people at Artex actually sent me their new 60 saturated color set of acrylic markers as well. So this comes with 60 colors, they are water-based and they have a brush tip. They also work on a variety of surfaces, which I haven't really played around with past. So here are a close-up of the 60 different colors from this particular set. I feel like this set actually has a pretty good range of colors, so I'm very excited to use these. So let's go ahead and take a look at the contents inside of the box. So we're kind of greeted with two little sticker sheets or label sheets with the color codes or numbers that we can then adhere to the actual markers itself. Now, from my knowledge, I believe that these kind of wider ones are for the base of the markers and then the smaller circular ones are for the actual top of these markers. So before we get into actually labeling the markers, let's take a closer look. So it is a brush tip acrylic marker and they kind of have a color coded kind of like cap and bottom side. But like I said, there are no codes or anything like that on the actual marker itself. So you get to adhere them on to wherever you want to. So let's go ahead and do that really quickly before we start our swatches. So kind of the fun thing about these markers is that even though they give you kind of like two labels for each of the markers, you could probably use only one and maybe use the other ones for your swatches in the future if you really wanted to. I definitely find that the round ones are a little bit more helpful since they are stored upside down like the markers are and it makes it a little bit easier for me to identify and see them a little bit faster because they are stored in this way. But I am going to be adhering the kind of larger labels on the side of the markers just because when I do lay them out on my desk, it's a little bit easier to identify that way, but it's not really that big of a deal. You can definitely use like one or the other for your swatches as well. So do a little swatch and use these as kind of like the labels or the name tags for each of those. So speaking of swatches, let's go ahead and open up my notebook where I've been keeping the majority of my swatches recently in kind of a way to keep all my swatches a little bit more organized and all in one space. So I kind of broke up the rows by fives, but I kind of made a mistake by making the first row have seven because I thought I would just fill them all the way to the edge, but it's a little bit easier for me to organize them a little bit equally if I do it this way. So here are a close up of all of the colors and their little swatches alongside with their little number or name codes that you could associate each of the colors with. So there is a lot of mid-tone and bright colors and a little bit lacking of some dark colors, but these are very bright and opaque so let's go ahead and test this out on something a little bit different. So kind of for this project I actually purchased these acrylic sheets uh, rather than like using acetate or finding maybe scraps of glass in my house maybe like picture frames and I also got these kind of foam board foam core type little backing boards as well so that we can kind of make a makeshift shadow box but instead of using like paper and using light and silhouettes to kind of block out my characters or my scene i wanted to do kind of like layering of glass so that we can have a little bit of transparency and a little bit of depth so i'm going to take you through kind of like the little process that i ended up doing so to start off with the background because i wanted it to be completely opaque i did not want to paint directly onto a glass or transparent sheet of acrylic so i decided to take one of my little foam boards. Now I feel like maybe using foam core would have been a better choice in terms of like the surface because this has a little bit more of a 
glossy surface. So you can see that the layering of my kind of paint isn't exactly the most opaque at the moment. And the marker was struggling slightly with trying to cover on this particular kind of medium or the surface for some reason. I have a little bit of an easier time working with these markers on glass. And I find that some of the markers were slightly more juicier than some of the other markers in this particular set. But concept wise for the art, you would have saw that I was kind of doing brief sketches in kind of like sticky notes in my sketchbook. So I had two ideas, which is one, I was gonna draw Fremine with an underwater scene and kind of treating it maybe like an aquarium so that we can play around with that glass a little bit more. But the idea that I ultimately went with just because I didn't wanna do too much kind of like layering of potential background colors and stuff is that I would draw my OC Kaisen and I have a watercolor piece where I drew him against kind of like a brick or stone wall with some like wisteria flowers kind of hanging in front of him and behind him. So I thought I could do something similar with that concept and kind of layer up the wall Kaisen and the flowers as kind of like three different sets of depth for our little plastic transparency box art type thing. So after I finished the background, I took some tracing paper, which is kind of like this almost transparent, slightly translucent kind of paper that people usually use to transfer their drawings to one surface to another using a light box. But I found that this was a little bit easier for me to use as a way to kind of draw Kaisen out. And then I could flip the paper over and still see my sketch and paint on top of the glass surface without needing to sketch on top of the, I guess the acrylic, I guess it's not glass. But I did flip Kaisen over to be looking, I guess like on the other side. So the reason why I flipped the sketch is that because I'm going to be working on one side of the acetate, I want one side to be the place where I'm layering up all the paint and kind of adding all the colors. But then when I flip it over, it'll be the clean version. So I kind of have to work a little bit backwards here. So I do the line work for Kaisen for the most part a little bit first. And then after that, anything that I want to appear on top has to be done first because we're gonna be layering in a backwards way. So if you think about it in like digital layers, if you have your base color and then you wanna add shadows on top and then highlights. So in that order, I would have to do highlights first, then shadows, and then my base color, just because of how I want things to appear on the opposite side. And hopefully that makes sense. If not, you can probably watch me kind of, kind of fuss away at this particular piece and trying to learn how to make things read a little bit correctly on the flip side. So while I'm working, I'm making sure to double check by flipping to see whether or not I like my placements of my colors and making sure that things are not overlapping in such a weird way. So I didn't really notice at this point because maybe it's because I'm laying my colors down on top of a sheet of tracing paper, which is laying on top of a white surface. I thought the colors were actually doing a great amount of coverage with kind of one pass, but I feel like the coverage on top of glass might need a few passes because glass is not, or I guess this case acetate, isn't exactly a very porous surface. So the kind of paint needs some time to dry and sometimes it thins out in some spots. And that's not really abnormal for a water-based medium. So I wasn't really going to be too fussy about it, but I definitely wish I layered up certain colors first before starting to cover it up with the black as I'll end up with some kind of splotchier areas that are a little bit more noticeable in his shirt, which is what I'm doing with this kind of muted cherry reddish color or maroon. So yeah. I 
kind of forgot to mention this earlier, but I have some other sets of acrylic markers, including the wide set, the, I think, two other standard sets, a metallic set, and the simp tap markers. So there are some times that I'm going to be using the simp tap marker to do the line work for Kaisen, and that's basically the black kind of marker that I was using to do the line work for his face, his clothing, and I use it to also fill in some of the black areas for his hair and his clothing at some point. So working on a transparent, very non-porous surface it was actually very fun and kind of eye-opening to learning how to paint on such a surface, but I think it would be fun to do another project like this because the way how this turns out isn't exactly how I expected and I'll talk about my mistakes a little bit later, but like I mentioned, I think it would have been smart to plan out certain areas beforehand and making sure that they were layered up properly so that I I could have an absolute 100% full coverage on the entirety of Kaisen. So double checking one more time and you can see that there's some patchy areas but I don't really mind it gives a little bit of texture to him and there are some of the places like for his hair highlights that probably required a little bit more layering so that they could have full opacity. And this is the next day because I did not have time to actually take a look at the results the day that I was working. So there are some scratchier areas and some more transparent areas. So I'll go ahead and kind of fill those in slightly. But in the meantime, let's work on our layer that's going to be in front of Kaisen. So I mentioned earlier that for this particular piece, I wanted to have kind of like wisteria kind of flowers that are a little bit more light and airy to be in front to kind of mimic the watercolor piece that I did like a few weeks ago of Kaisen. So to start off, I was blocking in some of my highlights and my shadow areas with the kind of like yellowy green and I was using a kind of pastel soft baby blue to do the shadows. After that, the majority of the painting will be a little bit of leaves here and there, a transition color for the yellow once again, and then after that I will add in just a heck of a load of white on top of it so that we can have basically just white flowers all the way around, but I definitely wish that I added a little bit more texture into some of these areas to make it look a little bit more full rather than super flat. So here I'm adding in our lighter yellow and then after that I will start to layer in the white. So as I'm layering in the white, I'm kind of doing large passes at first and I already can see that partially because I'm moving a little bit more quicker that the first kind of initial wash of the paint is going to be a little bit more translucent if anything. So it's going to take me a few layers for me to kind of build up that opacity that I want. But I've used these markers before on paper and I'll do a few more like little demo time lapses at the very end to show you guys the kind of opaqueness of the markers when done on paper and layered a little bit more properly with one another. So filling in a little bit of those last details and taking a quick peek, it doesn't look too terrible. It's not the prettiest in my opinion because of my lack of planning, but this is where I'm kind of made my mistake. So I forgot that because it's transparent, obviously, you can actually see the little foam tape that I use to separate my layers to create that depth. So a solution is to put a border around it so that we can hide those ugly edges. But another problem I had is that I did not align my acrylic sheets properly. So I'll, maybe I'll do a reattempt, but this is kind of like a fun project to do with the acrylic markers alongside with transparent sheets of acrylic. 
So I'm pulling out another sketchbook which has some thicker watercolor paper. So I've used the sketchbook in the past for a lot of my Inktober from last year, but I thought it'd be nice to test out these markers on a paper that's a little bit more porous and it's also thicker and has a little bit more tooth so that we can see how well these markers actually perform. So to start off, I did a sketch with my Pilot Color Eno in the color red and I quickly sketched out headshot of Venti from Genshin Impact just because some of the colors that I gravitate towards especially in this set tends to be like a little bit of those greens and blues alongside with the turquoise so I kind of wanted to take advantage of that and to kind of layer up those colors as we move along. <laughs> So right away, I already noticed that there is a difference. It was much easier for me to layer up colors in this way and to be a little bit more playful with the colors and not have to worry about the transparency as much. Because like I mentioned, because they are in a brush tip form, the ink dispenses in a particular way, which I think is great for keeping things really clean. They're very portable and they're great to use like on the go in your sketchbook to cover up like mistakes or to cover up bleeds through, you can use them for doodling, some other pieces, kind of more like graffiti graphic art that I kind of did a little bit more of a graphic style for my pieces of Masakiya that I did in the past, but I wanted to do something a little bit more painterly for the next two illustrations. So as I'm working on Venti, you can see that I'm trying my best to layer up a bunch of different colors for his eyes. I'm also going to be trying to layer up a bunch of different colors for his clothing and his hair so that we can play around with the properties a little bit more than just leaving it as very cell shaded with very deliberate marks. I definitely wanted to treat it as more of a doodling medium or leaving it a little bit more painterly in a way because I think that's kind of like the fun and the appeal of using something like an acrylic marker. So other than them being fairly opaque and it's fun to have those punchy bold colors because they are kind of like acrylic paint on the go it's kind of fun to layer up in this kind of way and have a little bit of those brush strokes that you can get from the brush tip marker tip it's just fun to layer in this kind of way that feels a little bit more freeing rather than making things look kind of like clean and crisp and pristine so even though the tip is fairly pointy and it comes to like a small point, I did struggle a little bit getting super super fine lines. So if you're looking for something that can produce super fine lines, I highly recommend the Simp Tap markers since the tips are a little bit different. They come to a very sharp point, they also dispense a little bit more paint I find. So I feel like if you pair those up alongside with the 60 set, you're probably very much set to go with having a plethora of color selection and matching different values and colors and hues together to probably create the pieces that you want or if you want a larger variety for doodling, for coloring, for covering up stuff then I think it's a good option. But sometimes having too large of a color selection might be a little bit intimidating for you. So they do have some other options out there too. But I definitely think that this particular set has a good range if you want those kind of more vibrant colors that you can have at your kind of like convenience rather than having to mix colors. So the one thing I really like about these markers especially is layering on top of some of the darker colors such as black and kind of using almost like the mid-tone and lighter colors as the highlights and kind of pulling and drawing out the color a little bit more. It's just very fun. So yeah, I tried my best to add as much color as I could to certain areas like blues and purples to the greens and choosing a bunch of different colors for the hair such as like blue, we have green, we have kind of like a muted green gray, we have pink, a little bit of a darker blue and all of that to kind of make the hair look a little bit more appealing visually. <laughs> So with Venti done in this particular sketchbook, I thought it'd be fun to do a small recap. Then we can go ahead and move on to my usual sketchbook, which is this baby breasts one. 
So I was kind of looking for an empty space to actually do a quick portrait of my OC Kaisen as kind of like a redemption. And I have this little test page that I was testing fountain pen markers earlier. So I did a quick sketch of Kaisen with the Pilot Color Eno, very similarly to the one I did of Venti. And I went ahead and started to paint. So I feel like right away, you can kind of tell that this paper and the previous paper, which is the watercolor paper in the pink sketchbook is quite different different in terms of how they take the paint from this particular marker. So if you can, I highly recommend using a thicker paper that's not prone to pilling or leaving those little, I guess, paper residue from moving back and forth of a kind of like wet-ish medium. So this particular quote unquote sketchbook is actually a notebook. So it actually has kind of like thinner notebook paper, which is very different than watercolor paper that has a little bit more tooth and it's a little bit like on the thicker side. So this one kind of feels like it's peeling a lot faster, but once you have like a layer down with the paint, I find it a lot easier to already start layering. So in a way, adding the first pass with your base for the acrylic marker kind of gives you a nice, smoother finish for you to then layer on top of. So sometimes I feel like I have to be very careful with my first layer, except for the black though. I think the black worked actually pretty well on its own and it didn't really pill the page, but some of the other markers I feel like pill the page a little bit more easily. So just be a little bit careful when using these particular markers on maybe thinner paper that are prone to the paper fibers from breaking apart because you don't want to get those paper fibers stuck to your marker and you really don't want to like burn a hole through the paper by working back and forth in the same area too long. But similar to Venti's piece, I tried my best to layer up as much colors as I possibly could. It does make a little bit more of a messier look, but I kind of find it appealing and I tried my best to clean it up a little bit more. Luckily, Kaisen has black hair, so I just took a black marker to kind of redefine his hair a little bit more. So with Kaisen done and Venti done, hopefully it'll give you a good kind of general gist of using these acrylic markers. I definitely think it's more of a cleaner way of using acrylic paint sometimes, especially using it on surfaces like your sketchbook or even like small canvases that I've used in the past as well in a previous video. Also, I kind of find the texture fun with being able to use a brush tip rather than kind of like a bullet nib. But hopefully you guys enjoyed watching today's video. Once again, thank you to Artex for sending me their 60 pack of acrylic markers. I've always have a fun time learning and trying out different mediums like this, which I feel like is a little bit out my comfort zone. But I believe I will be doing a giveaway on my Instagram as well for a set or two of these acrylic markers. So if you are interested in participating in that giveaway, I'll leave more information in the description and a link leading to my Instagram for you guys to comment and participate in that giveaway on there. So I believe there will be two winners and thank you again for Artex for letting me do a giveaway with them and an opportunity for you guys to try out some of those markers as well as I had a blast kind of playing around and letting myself be a little bit more loose with using these particular markers. So with that being said, I'll talk to you guys next time in the next video. Bye!